This is Twit. I think it's probably best if we talk about what actually is available. Yeah. Um, Apple does have a great little guide that kind of talks about the the, the key features that have been introduced. And um, it starts with different means of customizing your device. Um, you can now place apps and uh, widgets anywhere you want um, on the screen. So that means that you can uh, skip spaces on your device. You don't have to fill in every little area, um, which is quite nice. And you are able to uh, also kind of change the colors of the apps. I'm curious, have you played around with tinted icons um, and the the new kind of dark icons. We're waiting, of course, for developers to update their apps to really make those look good, right? Yeah, I mean, there's a few asterisks here. One, I am always careful to qualify that it's anywhere on the screen as long as it's still in the grid <laughs> because the <laughs> grid still exists. You can't just like pile icons here and there like, like files on your Mac's desktop. You know, they, they have to still snap to that grid. But as you said, you can leave empty spaces. I will also say that I've had much better experience leaving those empty spaces when I'm designing a home screen from the ground up as opposed to trying to rearrange an existing home screen that is full of uh, apps already and widgets because stuff still moves around to like kind of try to snap to grid and it can be kind of disorienting if you have yes. a, a screen full of stuff and you're trying to get that perfect positioning. So I always recommend maybe just start with a new home screen and build your, your home screen up from blank if you really want to customize where stuff is. Um, I've played around with all the icons uh, and designs and stuff like that. Um, Dark mode is pretty good, and I will add that despite waiting for the developers to update their apps to support it, Apple's actually gone ahead and basically tried to figure out ways to do that itself. So it will, even if you have apps that don't have their own dark mode icon, you might not know because Apple will sort of flip them into a dark mode regardless based on analyzing the icon and trying to make it look the way they think they should make it look. Now... That also means that the icon, you know, that those things might look a little weird because they, it's Apple deciding prog programmatically how to do it and not the developer deciding what they think looks good. Um, the tinting color thing. Mm -hmm. I've seen it could very be few. Good. It could be, but I see very few instances of it being good. This is my experience. I'm not a particularly color sensitive person. Like I don't. I'm not very good at color. I usually default to my wife's opinions on color and things. Um, not because I'm colorblind or anything like that. I just don't. I don't have a good sense for what looks good together. And so I've played around with it a bunch, and I think they've refined it a little bit in terms of making sure that you don't have icons that look too garish. But in the end, it's still. I don't think it's designed to work that way. Like I see why some people might want it, but I feel like more often than not, the best I can say about it is that there are some icons that look pretty good in a, in a tinted mode. And I think it's ones where they have very simple icons. So like messages, right? It's got a green bubble on a background or a green or a white bubble on a green background or whatever. But like, you can kind of make that work with a variety of different colors. But then you get into something complicated like photos, where the whole point is it's got a bunch of different colors in it. And simplifying that down to a single color, I think, doesn't look as good. So there are definitely cases where, it's, like, I wish you could do be a little more selective about how your icons looked, which I know you can if developers support it. But I kind of wish there was, like, a per icon mode. Um, I also understand why Apple doesn't want to do that, because that could <laughs> lead to some also truly hideous looking home screens. Um, but more than anything, I think I'm a fan of the automatic mode where it switches back and forth between light and dark, depending on time of day. Uh, for me, that I think is a, a good look and it... it it definitely is a good visual cue for sort of remind, rem, reminding myself like I'm in, oh, it's daytime, I'm working or it's nighttime and it's, things are a little more relaxed. Day yeah. Phone, I, iPhone, but one phone. <laughs> yeah. One phone that does a day in the night phone. I am also with you in terms of the, well, and all, pretty much everything that you've said. Um, I have not really liked the way that the tinted icons end up looking. It, Again, it could be good, and I do think that it gets better when you have um, the developer involved. But yes, for some apps, the way that the Photos app looks, not great. I love the um, ability to make the 
icons just a little bit bigger by just ditching the text. I think that's great. Yeah. Um, I know what the icons mean at this point. And most of the time I use Spotlight to actually launch my app. So it's kind of nice to have that um, as well. Hey, if you liked that clip, well, there's so much more to get by joining Club Twit. You can watch all of iOS Today, where we cover all things iOS, tvOS, HomePodOS, watchOS, and so much more. It's all the apps, all the tips and tricks, and everything with Rosemary Orchard and me, Micah Sargent. Join Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit to see all of iOS Today.